Hey, all physics and physical experiment enthusiasts, this is Andrei Shetnikov speaking. And on another day, while browsing the page of my good friend Evgeny Sklyarevsky, I came across an intriguing question pertaining to aviation and ship propellers. While discussing this issue, I came to the realization that by considering the dimensions of the ship's propeller, I am able to make a rapid estimation of the engine's power and vice versa. This allows me to ascertain the size of the propeller, or a set of propellers in case there are multiple ones. And with these thoughts, I want to share with you in this video. And I'll begin with the next simple question. And at what speed can the ends of the propeller blades move? Well, for an airplane it's clear, this speed cannot exceed the speed of sound, and it's slightly lower than it. And in terms of the ship's screw, there are also certain limitations that need to be considered in this regard. This speed cannot be higher than the speed at which active cavitation begins on the blades, resulting in the formation of bubbles due to boiling caused by the reduced pressure in the fluid medium surrounding the blades. Well, generally speaking, both of these, like, they both come from the same idea, you know? Well, you know, like, what is the purpose of a screwdriver? To repel water while repelling on two opposite surfaces of the blade, a pressure difference is created, and this pressure difference pushes the plane or ship in the opposite direction, achieving propulsion through fluid dynamics. Because this is an illustration of reactive movement, and this pressure difference is connected to the velocity head that is provided by the rotational motion of the screw mechanism. And we can write the change in pressure estimate on one side, and on the other side apply it to the velocity head multiplied by the density row, the velocity v squared, divided by 2. And from this point, the characteristic speed at which the liquid is thrown off originates, well, from which, by the way, these very ends of the blades move. This is a fail, I won't bother writing a grade, square root of delta p divided by ro. Well, for an airplane, that's how it's going to be if we take atmospheric pressure in delta P and air density in RO, we'll get a value of the order of the speed of sound here. And for a screw working in water, density. The environments are a thousand times larger, but we will also be considering delta P of approximately one atmosphere or slightly less. I would go for half an atmosphere. In that case, note a failing grade. I'll still take about 1 atm density is 1,000 times greater, so it costs the sqrt of 1,000, which is 30. So, the velocity of the blades in the water is approximately 30 times slower than the velocity of sound in the air. Well, there is 300 meters per second. We divide by 30 and get 10 meters per second. That is the typical speed that cannot be exceeded. However, if we have a large ship, then the propeller will rotate in a large manner, but at a slow pace. If it is a small boat or a speedboat, the propeller can rotate quickly enough for the tips of its blades to attain such a high speed. And this is our basic assessment, on which everything else will be based. And now we're going to have some basic school physics. Here I roughly drew the shape of a ship's propeller, the area swept by it. But this screw generates a flow of water that moves in that direction at a velocity of v, and consequently, a thrust force f is produced. Well, I'm going to assume that the flow rate is about the same as the speed of the propeller blade's rotation. This is our simplification. Now I am going to utilize Newton's second law in the form of force, which represents the alteration in momentum per unit of time. What's the amount of water we pump per unit of time? The area of the propeller is determined by the density of the water and the speed of the water. This is mass. In momentum, there is velocity. I have another velocity, squared here. Well, the next step, I'll now forcefully express the power of the car. I gotta multiply this force by the characteristic speed again, and I get the ratio of s to rho to v cubed. Now let's do a little bit of math. And here I have depicted an aircraft carrier of a real beauty, 
with a propeller radius of almost 4 meters. Well, let's find the area of four screws. It is 180 square meters. Now, as per our formula, to find the power, multiply this area by water density, 10 cubed, and the cube of the calculated velocity. This is still 10 thirds speed, 10 meters per second. And we get a result of 180 megawatts of power plant. According to Wikipedia, this power is 194 megawatts. The difference is minimal. Well, you can say, of course, that it just happened to me by chance. I was fortunate. Therefore, I am going to completely change direction and calculate the outboard motor by employing the identical formula. And I'll take the boat motor, Vortex. The radius of the blades is 12 centimeters, so the swept area is 45 thousandths of a square meter. According to my formula, the power of the motor is obtained by multiplying these 45 thousandths by the density of water to the power of 10 thirds and by the cube of the permissible speed, which is also 10 thirds. This gives us 45 kilowatts. However, boat motors are usually measured in horsepower. That's 60 horsepower. But as it turns out, the whirlwind was not producing 60 horsepower at all, but 30, which is half as much. Well, of course, I caught the order of magnitude, but it still turns out that my formula here is off. Oh, nothing of the sort. The thing is, a vortex is a poor copy of the German boat engine Kunig, which just happened to have 60 horsepower. So physics is effective. Comes to mind a wonderful story that academician Krulov tells in his memoirs, which is worth mentioning. So, this vessel, initially expected to reach a speed of around 10 knots, ended up only traveling at a velocity of 7 knots throughout its journey. And Krulov asked to show him the drawings. They even showed him a mock-up. He examined it closely and stated, shorten the propeller blades, they are excessively large. They shortened the blades, and the steamboat truly started to accelerate at a speed of 9.5 knots. We now have an understanding of why it is happening. Occasionally, a joke is also told in this place, but the joke has no connection or relevance to Krulov. And this joke is about engineers from different disciplines, such as mathematicians. So the story goes something like this. There's this guy, let's call him Krulov in the story, who did this job and they offered to pay him for it. He sent them a bill for 10,000 pounds. I'll say it again. It didn't happen. It didn't. It's a joke. Well, they asked him, and for what, exactly? Break it down for us point by point. What is the payment made for? And then he recorded a payment of 10 pounds for the act of drawing a line with chalk. On the blade of the propeller, 9,990 pounds for knowing where to put it. And now it is the time for our final question. And during this time, he will be like that. The blades of an airplane propeller are very narrow, while those of a ship's propeller are extremely wide. What do you think? What's the deal with this? Your thoughts on this matter? Drop a comment on this YouTube video.